Hello, my name is Philipp Kunze and I'm a PhD candidate at the Experimental Tumor Pathology at the University Clinic in Erlangen, Germany. In today's video I'm going to talk about some basic theory necessary for image analysis and quantification. The differences between mean pixel intensity and integrated pixel density and most importantly when to use each type of measurement. Starting with some basic theory and the question what images are. Images are built up by pixels which contain information of how the image is represented. In this regard the resolution plays an important role. The higher the number of pixels, the higher is the resolution. In our case, the image has 600 pixels by 600 pixels. Once you zoom into the image, you can see small squares with different shades of grey. Here, each square corresponds to a single pixel. Interestingly, the tone of grey is just a representation of a value. In fact, the pixels themselves are stored as arrays of numbers, similar to the array in the last figure. However, looking at the numbers directly makes it pretty hard for us to visualize what the image contains. Hence, the value of the pixel is conventionally displayed as a gray tone. As already mentioned, the gray tone represented by a pixel depends on the pixel value and the bit depth of an image. The pixel value or pixel intensity is the value of a pixel within a certain range between black and white. For example, we have here a 8-bit image of a gradient between black and white. When we look at the histogram below, you can see that the scale is ranging between 0, pure black, and 255, pure white. All the 254 steps in between represent the different shades of grey that can be represented by a pixel. Hence, the histogram gives us information about the intensity distribution and the range of the pixel depth of all the pixels within an image. So, what's the pixel depth? The pixel depth uh, represents the number of different shades or pixel values in between black and white. So, in other words, when an 8-bit image is like creating a form using squares, a 16-bit image is more like creating the same form using hexagons, and a 32-bit image more like using circles. In the end, the surface of the form built up by circles will be much smoother compared to the one that was formed by squares. Thus, the higher the bitrate, the more different pixel values or gray tones can be represented and therefore the information that can be stored in a pixel correlates with the bit depth. However, you should be aware of that the actual range of possible values depends on the acquisition equipment. So, a 16-bit image obtained using a 12-bit camera will only have 4,000 uh, 94 steps between black and white and not the 65,534. Therefore, the low bit depth will always dominate. So please keep that in mind. So what is all of this good for? For instance, a biologist will pretty likely work with images, micro or microscopic, that document certain processes and these images can be quantitatively analyzed. Here, the type of analysis um, can be divided broadly into two different types. On the one hand, we have the size analysis. Here, the length of uh, or the area of a region uh, of interest is measured by counting the number of pixels, and this can be used to determine, for example, cell size, growth, cell migration. In contrast, the intensity analysis of pixel values as mean intensity or integrated density can be used for, insta uh, for instance for quantifying cell density to analyze protein expression or determine tissue viability. Now I'm going to explain the difference between the three measurements area, mean intensity and integrated density using these three fluorescence images. Starting with the area of the region of interest represented by the blue line. You can easily see by eyeballing that the first image has the largest RRI. Next comes uh, the region of interest in the middle, uh, in the middle image. And lastly, the one in the image on the right, which is clearly the smallest. However, when we determine the mean pixel intensity, the right image with the smallest ROI has by far the most intensive red, followed by the ROI in the middle image, and finally the ROI in the image on the left with the lowest red intensity. 
In contrast, the integrated pixel density considers the area of the ROI, which is uh, why the image on the left with the largest ROI has the highest integrated density. Intriguingly, uh, the ROI with the highest mean pixel intensity has the lowest integrated density. And this should be no surprise, as the integrated density is equivalent to the product of area and mean pixel intensity. In summary, the length or area of an object of interest is determined by counting the number of pixels and can be used, for example, to analyze cell size, growth or migration. The mean pixel intensity, on the other hand, is the mean of all pixel values uh, within an image or a region of interest and is usually used for quantification independently of the size or when the size of the ROIs are very similar. Hence, mean pixel intensity can be used, for example, to determine uh, tissue viability, cell death, or cell density. Finally, the integrated pixel density is determined uh, by integrating the pixel values over the area, and thus is equivalent to the product of the area and the mean pixel intensity. This measurement comes in handy when the size and shape of our eyes are inhomogeneous. Hence, the integrated pixel density is used, for example, in protein expression analysis or spatial distrib uh, spatial distribution of stained proteins or cellular structures. I hope I could help to shed some light on how mean pixel intensity and integrated pixel density are determined and when it makes sense to use them. Thank you very much and goodbye.